What's up, Pride Fam? What's going on, guys? Uh, I'm here at Boss Barbell Club in Mountain View, California. It's Dan Green's gym. Uh, we decided we're probably going to start training here. We just kind of want to be in a different environment. So I'm going to do a vlog today, uh, get you guys caught up on my training. I'm still running Bulgarian Method, so I'm going to talk about that. Uh, today's kind of like an SVD day for me, so I max out on the squat. But I also am still on program for the deadlift and the bench press. If you saw my Bulgarian video, you know that I still actually push volume really hard on those lifts. So I got deadlifts today. I got a single at RP8, I believe. And then a single at RP9 on close grip Larson press for the bench press and then back down volume. I also hit a squat today, but yesterday, or sorry, two days ago, I hit a lifetime PR on the squat. My first lifetime PR in over two years. Uh, it was a grinder. And that zapped me. So today I took it easy on squat. I weighed just 562 pounds. I did a tempo squat. So I just want to keep it easy just because I'm still fried from grinding that fucking set out. It literally took the soul out of me. Uh, but I'm going to push it on deads and bench today. So it's kind of perfect timing because now I get to pull back on the squat, focus on my deadlift and bench press today. So I'm going to show you what we're doing there. I'm actually trying something a little bit different on my deadlifts. I'm getting my scapula kind of protracted and my ribs really down. And I'm focusing on actually like starting in a more crane-like position to allow my low back to stay really tight, but my upper back to give me leverage off the floor. It's been feeling pretty good lately, so I'm gonna show you guys what I built up to on, on the deadlifts and hopefully I can do something good today. That wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, so I hit 661 on my build-up set for deadlifts, and uh, that shit flew. And then I went 716, which was a big jump, but I knew I could handle it. Uh, and I actually looked at my program, I was supposed to do a nine. So I was like, cool, I could probably beat my old PR, because 705 has flown before. But I was stupid, and I decided to latch my belt one notch tighter, which absolutely destroyed my positioning. When I got down to the bar, I was so rounded over, but honestly, once you mentally hike super hard for like a big scary lift that you've never hit, like a lifetime PR, there's no like canceling that. Like if I would have backed away and tried to redo that, there's no way it's gonna work. So I went with it, I fucking grinded. Uh, so I'm gonna minimize my back downs just so I don't like overwork myself because my back's definitely a little fried from that. The good thing is though, is that was on a stiff bar and that was a lifetime PR. I've never even touched that weight before. And when I get ready for competition, soon I'll be on the deadlift bar. So it's actually pretty promising that I could take a 55 pound jump and still smoke that like that. So currently I'm doing close grip Larson press. So for me, my close grip Larson press is not very far off of my competition style bench press with leg drive. The reason why has to do with a lot of factors. Uh, muscle mass and just having a bodybuilding background really allows me to get a better stretch reflex and longer ranges of motion. And I'm stronger in longer ranges of motion. As well, if you take a powerlifter who's always only benched arch, they tend to be really weak outside of that arch position. So I used to do a lot of full range of motion, dumbbell pressing and stuff like that. So I think that's why my close grip larsen is pretty similar. And I also think it has to do with my strength dominances in my chest and my shoulders. Contrary to popular belief, um, a close grip bench is not more tricep dominant. Elbow position affects, or shoulder position and elbow position affects the tricep activation. But the fuller range of motion actually just elicits more activation everywhere. And off of the chest is actually a huge stretch on the pecs. So close grip bench uh, builds people's pecs up. If you know who uh, Chess Nipson is on Instagram, Christian, that guy's pecs are fucking insane. He benches close grip. So anyway, uh, what I'm doing with it, is, so we're about four months out or a little less now uh, from my meet in December, December 7th, and I'm doing close grip Larson with singles followed by back offs. Next training block, I'm going to do regular Larson press followed by back offs. 
The cycle after that, I'm going to do competition bench press followed by back offs and then peak like that. So I'll have two blocks of competition bench and then um, two blocks of these variants. And it goes in a linear fashion. So because obviously I'm going to have less weight on the bar by a little bit with a close grip Larson press, I'm going to be able to objectively load from block to block without having to change the rep range. So instead of me doing maybe triples or fours and then going down by a rep next block and then down another rep by next block, I'm just linearly loading singles with variation. So this is a programming tactic a lot of you can use. I'll do the same thing with like pause squats going into a comp squat and you can keep all the, the volume the same but just minimize load objectively by you know altering the exercise and kind of re regressing it a little bit. So it's a good tactic at home. What's up Brian man? What's going on guys? So uh, I didn't get to close out the vlog yesterday because Boss Barbell Club closes early, so I had to rush out of there. But I want to I want to keep this going. So I want to talk about the training. I want to talk about the team's training. Uh, and let's just dive into it. So uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, fatigue and adaptation. So yesterday, I maxed out on deadlifts. Uh, it was kind of my own fault. I, I tightened up my belt right before the set. I took a big jump. I was a little emotionally attached. Um, and I started in a bad position, but there was no going back. But anyway, I fucking grinded out that, that crazy deadlift. Today I feel completely fine. Now, part of this is due to my natural disposition to, uh, my body just responds really well to intensity and exertion. It doesn't really like fry me, so to say. I definitely am a little fatigued today, but like actually hardly, which is just insane given how grindy that deadlift uh, set was. And I built up today actually on paused uh, naked high bar squats with like a pretty legit fucking pause. I hit 507 which is my PR on this variation, but I did it with zero hype and under extreme control and almost with the tempo and it's super easy. And I had probably another 10 or 15 kilos in me easy today. Uh, I'm purposely taking it back, but I actually feel amazing. And I think part of this is, yeah, my natural disposition towards intensity and exertion. I don't respond to volume very well, but I do respond well to intensity and exertion. However, I think also part of this is adaptation from the program. So, uh, you know, specific adaptation to impose demand, the set principle. The more you do something, the more you get better at doing that. And because the Bulgarian method's a lot of maxing out, your body kind of gets used to that. Whether it be on the deadlift, the squat, that's a systemic fatigue you sustain from maxing out. And I just feel fucking good, honestly. And, and I wanna remind people that, you know, cause sometimes I think we can get caught up in doing things that are non-specific to powerlifting. Now I'm not saying everyone should run the Bulgarian method or anything like that, but you can really build up an adaptation and make your body used to a certain stimulus to where it's not taxing. Ashton Ruska, every single weekend basically max, maxes out on his squat, his bench press, and his deadlift. He's one of the strongest guys in the world, if not like the strongest right now. Uh, he's a freak of nature. And a lot of people are like, bro, like how do you handle that? And they say, oh, it's genetics, oh, it's this. I think some of that definitely plays a role, but I think a lot of it is, is he just, came up with something a little unorthodox, he's carrying it out and he's adapted to it over time. And not every weekend's a PR, but he has linearly kind of gained strength doing this. And so, you know, uh, said principle guys, um, let's talk about execution. So the team was training yesterday. My boy Luis uh, did really good on deadlifts. He had beltless deadlifts and he came pretty close to his comp PR, which is 512. He hit 485, I believe it was, or his 496. It was one of them, but he had four reds on the bar with or without the collar. And the set before actually, um, he uh, was, he had like sloppy form, his knees caved, I didn't like it. I told him to execute with position more in mind. And what you'll notice is he executed a lot more poised on his top set and it looks slower off the floor, but you can tell it was like overall easy because he maintained his position really well. And sometimes I don't think people understand that execution uh, good execution will oftentimes lead to uh, movements to look smooth, but very crispy. However, speed is not always indicative of uh, a strong set. So what I'm trying to say here is basically he could have rushed this set, the knees could have caved in, and maybe he rips it up kind of fast, but in reality he adds five more kilos and he doesn't lock it out because his back is rounded over. As where if he stays in this position, we go up five kilos, he's totally fine. He can just keep incrementally loading and it's, it's a very predictable outcome for his top set. So uh, execution is everything. And you'll actually see this with Kristen too. She was doing her bench press workout. Uh, she was building up to a single at nine. Her a set of, I think it was 150 with some chip plates, fucking flew up. We go up to 155, doesn't even budge off the chest. But I wanna show here on the screen, look at the difference between her chest position, how much more arch she was. This had to do with the way she set up on the bench. And the two things you always wanna set up on a bench press are your shoulder position, your feet position. They should be on the same position 
every time on the bench press you're using. This is something you have to execute and carry out very methodically on your warmups and memorize where you are. She scooted a little too far down on the top set and she wasn't in the same amount of arch and this equated to her having a longer range of motion but also she just basically didn't warm up in that position so when she took her top set like that, uh, she wasn't stable or strong on the chest and she missed it. And so she misses purely not because of strength, but execution. And this is why you'll see powerlifters do really well in the gym. But they have a hard time executing true one RMs or close to it on the platform because it's a total different game when there's a bunch of people staring at you. You have judge commands you have to listen to. And you have to also do the technical, you have to uh, technically carry out the lifts under super heavy loads all while this is going on. So I can't express enough how important execution is for your success as a powerlifter. So I'd encourage you guys to make sure you're doing that well. Uh, and lastly, I want to talk Talk about comp equipment. So I fucking always get into debates every time I talk about this on my Instagram. I, I don't have like empirical data to show you this, but I can assure you from my own data as a coach, when my clients train on purely comp specific equipment, meaning kilo plates, you know, powerlifting plates, uh, powerlifting bar, so you know, an Alico or a, a Rogo Ohio power bar, or even like a Texas power bar could do, although it's a little bit whippier. Uh, and you're training on like the shit you're supposed to be training on for powerlifting. Uh, my clients' injuries are, are way lower. Their aches and pains are way lower and they can handle so much more volume. So I, this is something that I have noticed hands down because what'll happen is I have lifters who will be purely at a powerlifting gym and then life will happen and then they have to go to a commercial gym for a little bit because they're scheduled or whatever. And every time that happens, the amount of volume they can sustain without you know incurring injury is way lower like almost like 25 to 35 percent lower i actually tracked this on some of my clients recently luis uh andrew some of the guys i trained with in person kristen actually too they've been uh dealing with this while we're trying to sort out to find a gym that we can regularly train at because barry is super limited with powerlifting gyms there's not a lot around us boss barbell club's like a fucking hour drive from us so it's really far but um, when they were at the commercial gym, I had to pull back their volume. And it was like they kept getting little aches and pains and beat up. And then the second they got back on comp equipment, going to Central Boss Barbell, um, their, their aches and pains dropped. And all of a sudden, you know, Andrew can handle three times a week squatting again. Luis's form's looking better than ever on his deadlift again. And, and shit's just clicking. And the reason that you have to understand is that extra whip you get on the bar when you're deadlifting, that changes your start position. Therefore, you're only gonna strengthen that position, not that extra two inches that you're missing off the floor, which is the hardest part of a sumo deadlift. And then when you go to do that on a comp pole, you're not stable or strong there because you haven't adapted there because you've been spending so much time at the commercial gym, some shit can go wrong. Now, it's not saying you're gonna like die if you have to train a commercial gym. I'm not saying you're not gonna be able to make results, nothing like that. I'm just saying your results will be better and the amount of volume you can handle is gonna be a lot higher than I think a lot of you realize. Same thing on the squat when that bar whips and rolls up your back, that's going to eat up the elbows a little bit if you're losing rack position or it's going to, you know, make your back round over a little bit or something's going to happen. Same thing on the bench presses especially. You can't arch on those benches, your shoulders, they're, it's like a slip and slide. You're going to get beat up. I can't express this enough. I think a lot of people think I'm overblowing this. Two years ago, if you would ask me this, I, I would have told myself I was overblowing this. And it wasn't until I've had access to both and gone back and forth a couple times to where I become acutely aware of this. And so it took a lot of trial and error for me to come to these conclusions, but I swear I'm not overblowing this. And so lastly, kind of what I want to say about, you know, uh, everything is if you have access to comp equipment, even if it's, you know, a 30 minute, 45 minute drive from your house, I would highly recommend if you take powerlifting seriously, go there. Um, that's pretty much it guys. I just want to close out this vlog. Uh, I, I, I want to intend to show uh, more vlogs in the coming future. I want to show more of my training and just the atmosphere because I honestly think the, the lifting atmosphere that we have with our friends on the weekend is super dope and fun. I just want to show you guys that. I want to show people how communal and awesome powerlifting can be. It can be very tribal in a good way and I want to kind of show that and I'm also going to keep a lot of good informative videos coming. So if you have any questions, leave it down below. Give the video a thumbs up and until next time, I'll see you guys later.